What is going on guys, it's Gospel Gamer here, we are back on Steins Gate Zero. And now the sun was setting earlier now that December had arrived. Natsume Nikase, oh fuck me, that's a fucking annoying name. I was surprised by how quickly it got on dark while she was out rummaging through the cosplay shops. Cosplaying is awesome by the way. Oh god, the wheeled suit, oh god, my hiccups. This is horrible, why, why like, do all my bodily functions fucking wind up when I'm recording? The wheeled suitcase on the ground next to her felt heavy. She'd done her best to jam everything she brought today inside, and it was bursting at the seams. Still, spending a whole day shopping with her cosplay friends was a lot of fun. She felt tired, but it was also a good tired. Her footsteps were light as she walked back to the station. I'm pretty certain Fubuki isn't actually in the anime, so I don't know who she is. Oh, Mayushi. Fubuki tried to grab her friend, Mayuri Shina, for a hug. Mayuri dodged out of the way. Mayuri may have looked like in her head, but she was actually quite athletic. Fubuki, by the way, was Natsume Nikase's cops, uh, cosplay name. I don't recognise who she is. Um, I feel like, okay, that, okay. Katsumi was a, in her second year at high school. She and Mayuri were the same age, but were total opposites. Katsumi was boyish and athletic, and when she cosplayed as a male character, she attracted more female Kameko than male ones. Komima! That is a cool outfit, by the way. The four friends had gone, Maiden's Road, had gone to cosplay shops along uh, Yuga Waya. Oh, fuck me, Yuga Waya. I'm going to go with that. Maidens Road in Tokyo Hands, like in Ikebukuro. Uh, then moved to Akihabara and visited several more. This is all part of the pri final preparations for Winter Komima. God, cosplay shopping in the UK is a lot harder. It's a lot easier over there. <laughs> Kaide, I think that's her name. Kaide sounded a little worried. Her real name was Kaide. Oh, fuck me. Kaide. Kaide. It's Kaide. It's gotta be Kaide. Kaide Kurishima. And she used her real name as a cosplay pseudonym. She was three years older than Katsumi and in college. Kaide was extremely feminine and her measurements were just like the one. Uh, the, fuck me. It's so. All of a sudden, words look different to me. Uh, <laughs> measurements were just like the ones magazine models claim to have. But she was very shy. People had tried many times to persuade her to enter the pageant at her college, but she always refused, saying normal events are kind of scary. But even so, cosplaying at Kamiyama with the rest of them was something she looked forward to. Amayuki. She's got a cute name, Amayuki. Amayuki proposed. Mayuri accepted. They are now a lesbian couple. She had very noble, elegant features, but the rest of her was easygoing and laid back. Though Katsumi was a fellow girl, she still thought Amiyuki was beautiful. Even her light blue penetrating eyes lacked the arrogance uh, that beautiful women usually possessed. They were filled with instead of friendly light. Her real name was Yuki Amane. She was a senior at Meiji... Oh, fuck me. Me Meiji... You fuck me. Words. 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 Why are words? Words. And in the same club as Kaede. She was the oldest of the four. She once tried giving up cosplay to focus. Oh, she once tried to give up cosplay. Fuck me, words. Jesus Christ, this is going badly all of a sudden. And focus on job hunting. After just six months, she'd given up on work and gone back to costuming. Since then, she'd been spending most of the time in Katsumi and the others. If only, eh? If only. Everyone smiled at her, but Mayuri quickly shook her head. I reckon cosplaying is going to become very important at some point in this story. Is it, it the girl on the right looks like Vert from um from the uh? What are they called? Hyperdimension games. Don't know why I thought of that all of a sudden. 
まゆりちゃんぜひ手伝わせてほしいなうんじゃあみんなで作ろう Katsumi knew that it made Mayuri really happy when someone praised her cosplay outfits. Yes, a favor. Mayuri told them about an event that quickly became a mainstay of the Japanese holiday year. Christmas parties, yay! Okay, I guess you want to go then. Kasumi's only plan for Christmas Eve was dinner with her family, so she raised her hand instantly. None of her friends at school wanted to do anything that night. She'd been a little put out about that, since it meant that they all had boyfriends. Obviously, Amayuki can't. Kaede also nodded, but Yuki seemed a little hesitant. All the Christmas dates. She loves everyone, except from her. Katsumi quickly jumped over to Katie and gave her a big hug. Katie was soft and smelled good and enduring, uh, and enduring this sort of sexual harassment was nothing new for her. All the sexual harassment. Oh, a yummy quiche? God, quiches are awesome. Yuki was an excellent chef and had been teaching Mayuri a lot lately. Both Katsumi and Kaede would also occasionally participate in what they called Yuki Amane's cooking lessons. I can't read words because English is shit and hard. I don't like English. Oh, spinach and mushroom quiche. Okay, that does sound actually really good. That sounds amazing now. Oh, God, so talking about yummy quiches. God, ham, wait, ham tomorrow and bacon. <gasps> God, I love quiche. Yeah, lots of different quiches. Everyone loves quiche. Less than a month left, so we're roughly in like the beginning of December, basically. Mayushi is very okay with that. Katsumi went over her schedule in her head. Katsumi really wanted to go. She was really, she was pretty disappointed. She would have loved the chance to eat one of Yuki's good quiches. Not one of her bad quiches. As she thought about the quiche, her stomach began to rumble. It was about time for dinner. Yuki and Mayuri worked out the time and place for their meetup. Yeah. Santa outfits. Oh, 
<laughs> what the fuck was that noise? Mayuri posed like she was cheering. Cute mini skirt, white knee socks, and red boots. I'm not sure if that's cute or uh, something else. Kasumi spoke to Mayuri and Yuki without any confidence in her voice. There was nothing Katsumi could say. She was right. It bothered Katsumi a lot that she looked like a boy. And she knew the sort of clothing didn't look right on her. Still at heart, she was a young girl and she wanted to wear cute clothes. Oh, she has like a fixation with the marrying her, doesn't she? Daru. All the Santa outfits. Everyone loves Santa outfits. I agree, it is a waste. Oh, Okabe okay, was see you in a cute cosplay outfit. Ah, they're alluding to that, are they? Mayuri made a weird noise as soon as she heard that name. Oh, they're teasing about her be him being uh, her boyfriend. Katsumi had met him many times. He was tall, but he always looked pale and thin, and whenever he laughed, he seemed kind of sad. But from what Mayuri said, until half a year ago, he'd been a totally different person. She said he was haughty and arrogant, but also kind and a great leader. Mayuri was known to let her emotions influence her judgement, so Katsumi didn't know how much of that description was accurate. No, that's a pretty accurate. Mayuri started to freak out even more after hearing the word boyfriend. <laughs> oh dear. They're all ganging up on her. Yuki and Kai, they weren't buying it either. Honestly, Okari and Mayuri seemed more than not like bleh, more like an old wedded couple that had been together for years than boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> Who? Mayuri sounded totally unconcerned, which made Katsumi even more surprised. Yeah, Mayuri and, and Okabe are more like brother and sister. Really, when you think about it. Who could have guessed? It was Yuki, the eldest, who spoke first. Yeah, exactly, they're, they're childhood friends. So. Mayuri's smile seemed very sad to Katsumi. She felt a sudden impulse to give her schoolmate a hug. Mayuri smiled and walked over to Yuki as if to blow away the awkwardness. Yeah, with your boyfriend. You avoided the question by spinning it on to her. Now it's your turn. Oh, really? Wow. First Mayuri, then Yuki. Katsumi was sunned. Oh, 
Well, that is a surprise, apparently. Mayuri started to fidget. Oh shit! Oh fuck! I've just realised who she looks like. I... I think that's uh, what's her face's mum. It's got to be. It has got to be. I've literally only just realised the similarity is stunning. It, honestly, the hair's the same colour. The, oh, oh dear. How did I fucking only just realise? The man that Kasumi and Kade were insulting was Itaru Hashida, a college student, a member of Mayuri's club. He was a hardcore otaku, one of the hybrid types, who said he enjoyed both two- and three-dimensional girls. Yep, definite hybrid. And like Kasumi has said, he was a preferred gentleman. He would say perverse things all day without the slightest shame. Whenever you told him he was a pervert, he would say, No, I'm a per perverted gentleman. He was a dangerous guy. He wasn't that dangerous. Why is the horse with the cat face? <laughs> but Yuki didn't seem bothered. She actually looked a little sad. Oh, so she does like him. Mayuri was shocked far above and beyond her usual limit. She was so surprised she let go of a suitcase and let it fall to the ground. And instead of picking up, she started talking frantically. Oh my god. She really is talking frantically here. How did he react then? Yuki had met Mayuri four months ago at Summer Komima. Katsumi and Kaede had come wearing old outfits Mayuri made. Kaede found Yuki at the convention hall all by herself and they met up. Afterward, they'd all gone to a party where she met Mayuri's friend Itaru Hashide. Katsumi had definitely witnessed Yuki and Itaru having a friendly conversation. Ever since then, Yuki and my uh, fuck me, Yuki and Mayuri and Daru had become friends, and Yuki had started going to Mayuri's club, the F Future Gadget Laboratory. I'm starring over these lines really badly. In other words, Yuki and Itaru had been talking ever since Samakamima, but still, Yuki chuckled sadly and shook her head. <laughs> He probably thinks you're intimidating because you're attractive. That's normally what it is. Doesn't mean you are intimidating. It just means that he's scared of being rejected. God. A little sister, that is weird. That's quite um, an incestuous sort of uh, thing to say. Suzuha. Isn't Suzuha's daughter? For some reason, Mayuri looked like she was about to cry. She seemed to want to say something, but couldn't bring herself to. Her lips were quivering. Oh yeah, she knows that it's her. Yeah, shit. She wants to tell her, but she can't. Obviously. But it certainly didn't look like nothing. Katsumi couldn't bear to watch her anymore, and so she gave in to her impulses. Ah, oh, poor Mayushi. <laughs> oh dear. Kasumi snapped behind Mayuri and started to tickle her under her arms. <laughs> Voice acts the laughs are so fucking ridiculous, aren't they? God, they really are.
Um... Uh, a hand is definitely on the boob, isn't it? It's not just me. Mayuri was laughing so hard she was crying, and this time Katsumi succeeded in giving her a hug, even though they were in public. She started rubbing her cheek against her. She's definitely grabbing the boob. Definitely grabbing the boob. Um, so that's the name of my new album, uh, I Wanna Take You Home and Lick You Forever. Uh, the first song on it is Cunnilingual. Um, yes. I suppose there was a joke in there somewhere. I'll leave you to figure it out. Ha, huh, I am funny. I'm not. But I don't care if it's bad, marry me. Mayuri tried to run away, but Fubuki grabbed her and started kiss her all, all over. What the fuck? This has turned very strange. <laughs> In the end, Katsumi kept clinging to Mayuri until they reached the station. She felt a lot better, but catching Mayuri when she tried to escape used a lot of energy. Either way, now she that she was satisfied. <gasps> she shuddered and turned back towards Mayuri as an image came into her mind from out of nowhere. ね、マユシ。ん?何? <laughs> Hmm, I what that image was. Like her falling in front of a train. I oh, that's not the case. You can't see it die again. Don't want to see it die. Can't, can't stand it. Hmm, <coughs> my chest. Mayuri and Yuki split up with them in front of oh, me. Mayuri and Yuki split up with them in front of the station since they were talking about taking a different train, not talking a different train, taking a different train. Bye bye. Katsumi stood still and watched the two of them until they were out of sight. She felt like she was about to cry and looked up to stop the tears from falling. <laughs> Kaede was standing next to her, looking worried. Even after Kaede asked, Katsumi wasn't sure she should tell her. There was no way she would believe it anyway. Probably was forced. Of course she knows this. She's your friend! Katsumi and Kaede had known each other for two years. Since their ages were so different, they treated each other like older and younger sisters, so at times like this, Kaede was really sharp. Kaede didn't talk much, but that meant she paid a lot of attention to the people around her. Part of it was also so Katsumi Part of it was also that Katsumi wasn't good at hiding things. She just couldn't lie to Kaede no matter what. She gave up and decided to stay. <laughs> Um What? <laughs> Kasumi remembered the nightmares and the things she kept seeing no matter how much she didn't want to. Yume? <laughs> 
夢の中でマユシーが死んでその度に私や楓ちゃんは泣いて泣いてでもどうすることもできなくて<笑>夕べ見た夢なんか最悪だった。私たちの目の前で突然マユシーが倒れて動かなくなっちゃうのそのマユシーをねオカリンさんが悲鳴を上げながら抱きしめて大きな声で叫んでてねえどうしちゃったんだろう私 Oh fuck's sake if I have to watch you fucking die again I'm gonna murder someone 落ち着いてハブキちゃん多分疲れてるせいよそうかな<笑>そうなのかなだってまゆりちゃん今日もすごく元気だったでしょカイデゲイフカツミエジェントショーダハグだから大丈夫私やだよまゆしが死んだりしたらそんなことありえないわ Don't say that. Kaede's words make Katsumi calm down a little. She was glad to have an older friend like this. Hmm, it's happened multiple times. Her hand squeezed Katsumi's shoulder tightly. Being held like this made Katsumi feel a lot better. But that night she had the nightmares again. Is that gonna. Okay. I think we'll end the episode here. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like in the section below. And if you want to see more of this, then do subscribe to the channel as I upload every day. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.